home. Just make yourself comfortable, Mom. I'm sure after that long trip, you probably want to rest up a bit. Oh, my trip was fine. It was the ride from the airport that's got me weary. Now, I know your father and I live most of our, so our lives in the South, but you city folk draw like you running moonshine, <laughs> trying to outrun the police. And since when did your last name become Earnhardt? Earnhardt? Yeah, you draw like you race cars now. I thought instead of coming to the house, maybe you had to make an emergency exit to the hospital or something. <laughs> Actually, you're not completely wrong. I took off from work this, after, this morning to pick you up from the airport and to help you get settled in. I have to get back to work later this afternoon. Well, thank you for the NASCAR ride from the airport. <laughs> but like I told you in the car, I don't want nobody making a fuss over me. I was taking care of myself at home. I can take care of myself here. Ma, I understand how important your independence is to you. I just don't want you to have to want for anything, including company. Now, it was you and your husband's idea that I come live with you and your family in the first place. I've always been the type that can take care of myself. And well, when your father died, I just learned how to make do on my own. You know what, Ma? And that's why we asked you to come live with us. We don't want you to feel alone. Well, I will admit, it did take some getting used to being in that big old house all alone. But after a few days, I realized I finally had the house to myself. No more snoring, no more leaving the toilet seat up, and most importantly, no more toenail clippings in the bed. Ma, you talk about dad like he's Ricardo's age. Child, your father was a man, and at any age, a man is going to do what a man is going to do. Tell me your husband ain't the same. <laughs> what is that husband of yours anyway? These bags ain't gonna get to my room on their own. And I'm definitely not taking them. <laughs> Walter, we're home from the airport. Hello? Yeah. With that kind of investment, you're gonna definitely need a separate tax shelter. Hey, look, my mother-in-law just arrived. I'll call you back later. No, 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 look, don't worry. How many times have I told you? You're my most important client. All right, I'll talk to you later. Mama Pearl. Hey, baby. How you doing? We're so glad you decided to come to live with us. I trust that the flight and the ride home will find you. Ask Jeff Gordon over here. <laughs> Ma's not used to city driving. I wanted to make sure that I had enough time to get her home and settled in. I'm going back to work later this afternoon. You didn't take the whole day off? I couldn't. The hospital's interviewing a new cardiologist today, and I need to be there. <laughs> a cardi who? A cardiologist. The doctor who specializes in the heart and the cardiovascular system? Oh, maybe your father should have made a point to see one of those. Maybe if he had, he'd still be here today. You know what? I remember telling Dad to see a doctor on a regular basis. I thought he was doing that. Oh, he was. Just that the doctor forgot to tell him one thing. What's that? Stay away from the little blue pill. <laughs> I think I'll take your bags to your room after that. That's a good idea. And while you're doing that, I'll grab us something to drink. Would you like water, iced tea, or diet soda? You got any Heineken? Heineken. Now, since when you start drinking Heineken? Since your father left a case of it in the refrigerator. I had one a few days after the funeral. I've been drinking them ever since. It's been a while since I've been in this house. My baby. Hmm. I remember that. Grandma Pearl. Hey, baby. Grandma Pearl, what's happening? What's happening? <laughs> what's happening is you better give your grandmother a hug, slapping my hands like I played for the Lady Terps basketball team. You hug your grandmother, boy. Shoot, you know how I do, Grandma. Gotta keep it gangster. How long have you been here? Your mother and I just got in a few minutes ago. We heard that Ma was picking you up from the airport today. I'm glad you're coming to stay with us. Oh, thank you. I'm glad I'm coming to stay too, baby. Ma was saying she was starting to worry about you being all alone. You know, after Granddaddy died. Child, your mother didn't have to worry about me. I was a single woman 
and the house all to herself. I was fitting the party like it was 1999. <laughs> You're so crazy, Grandma. Crazy like a fox. Well, it's good to see you again. Here, let me check your grandbabies out. Get a better look at you. Like my outfit, Grandma? Well, I don't know, because I'm still looking for the rest of it. <laughs> and what's this thing you got on your head? Oh, this? <laughs> it's a skull cap, yo. Look, everybody's wearing them, yo. It's dope, ain't it? I guess you got to be on dope to think that thing looks good on your head. Man, what you know about fashion? Man, up here, this is what's in style, trust me. And why are your pants hanging off your butt? Have belts gone out of style? This is how we wear them. Not anymore, you don't. Take that thing off your head and pull them pants up. When I went to school, young men wore jackets and ties, and young women wore dresses. When your mother and father went to school, young men wore collared shirts and slacks, and young women wore blouses and skirts. Now, I don't know what changed between my generation and yours, but there are some things that just never go out of style, and that's looking decent. Shoot, it was a half day today. Half day? Yep, school it out early today. When I was in school, there was no such thing as half days. We studied from sunup to sundown. <laughs> and when it got dark, we lit the oil lamp and kept on studying. Great story, Grandma. Half day. You two home already? And why so early? Half day. Half day. Half a day. She didn't tell me they had a half day. I didn't know. Besides, I thought you were the one keeping track of their school's calendar. With all my clients, I can barely keep track of my own. Well, it's time for us to go upstairs, change clothes, and uh, find the oil lab and study till sunrise. <laughs> Great to see you again, Grandma. Bye, Grandma. That thing off your head, boy. Here you go, Ma. No Heineken. All we have is Budweiser. Yeah, we'll make a list and go to the grocery store a little later on this weekend. <sighs> like I said, don't bother. I can take care of myself. We know you don't want to be a bother, but we're here to make sure you have everything you need. We're family, remember? <laughs> Speaking of family, I notice my grandchildren are really growing up fast. I mean, it's only been 11 months since I last seen them at the funeral. And I hardly recognized them. Oh, Ma, you know how kids are. You close your eyes for more than one minute, it looks like they've grown up another 10 years. <laughs> well, it seems to me as if they're already becoming adults. I've only been here for like 20 minutes, and I see changes in them that you two don't seem to notice. Kids grow fast, Ma, you know that. Besides, it's easier to see the changes in them when you see them once a year than it is when you see them every day. Well, somebody need to be opening their eyes a bit around here because I'm seeing changes in them that are happening so fast. Pretty soon, I won't be the only grandparent around here. I think your glasses need a new prescription <laughs> because you're seeing the total opposite of the way our kids are being raised. Well, you know what they say about someone on the outside looking in? Tend to see things that the person on the inside don't seem to see. The kids are fine, Ma. Besides, there's more important things to worry about. Such as? Making arrangements to sell your house. Now, Walter knows a good real estate investor who knows a good broker in North Carolina who can list your property for you. Who said I was ready to sell the house? Look, now that you're living with us, we need to make sure that you take care of the investments of your past husband's house. I mean, you know, you don't want to wait too late. The market can change from a seller's market to a buyer's market. We don't want that to happen. Look. Selling the house is not something that I'm going to rush to do. Like everything else, I'll do it when the time is right. I dated your father for 10 years before I decided to say I do. If I would have rushed to marry him, I could have later found out I married the wrong man and ended up with bad children, bad luck, and bad credit. <laughs> I did not rush to get married. I'm not going to rush to sell my house. Look, Ma, we know you don't want to rush to sell the home that you and your husband made. But I mean, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, the market is changing. Everything is just going out of control. And sh you never know. You don't want to lose money on that deal now. Well, I'll just take my chances. You know what? It's your decision, Ma. 
look, I have to be getting back to work. So make yourself comfortable, because you at home now. You know where everything is and how everything works. And if I don't, I'll figure it out. And if I can't figure it out and break it, I'll buy a new one. <laughs> just give Walter a call if you need help. Hmm, that just reminds me. I need to go call Don Ashley. Ma, I'll be in my office if you need. All right. See you later, Ma. worrying about what I'm going to do with my house, somebody need to be concerned with getting this house in order. Hmm. Am I the only one who hears the door around here? I guess I am at home. Visitor won't be answering the door in somebody else's house. <laughs> well, praise his name. Praise his name. Mm. Aren't, oh, you a, aren't you a sight for sore <laughs> Robert Davis, how are you? I'm blessed now that the Pearl of Wisdom has come home to be with her family. So I take it you heard that I was coming up north to live with Renee and the family? Well, word caught my ears down at the church, and you know how they can talk. I told them I'd come by and extend a personal invitation for you to be a part of the church family again. <laughs> Well, I really appreciate that, Reverend Davis. Mm -hmm. You know, I always enjoyed attending your church. You're a man who sure know how to deliver a sermon. Is that right? Can I mind if I put this up here? Help yourself. Okay. Absolutely. Start at 12, finish by 12, 15. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you crazy. Now, I don't think I preach that fast, but uh, I do believe in getting to the point. Make it plain, son. That's what my father always used to tell me. But I, too, am a believer of getting to the point. Mm -hmm. In college, I bought the summary books instead of the textbooks. And when I became a member of my church, I bought the dummies guide to Christianity. <laughs> you crazy, Pearl. But you know, down at Mount Zion, none of that even matters, Pearl. We're all God's children, okay? Being a child of God is the only thing that matters down at Mount Zion. And since we're all God's children, everybody's welcome. That sounds like a sermon to me. Well, you better preach. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. See, down at Mount Zion, it doesn't matter your age. Pearl, can you hear me talking? Now. Don't fool me now. It doesn't matter your race, your color, or your gender. Help me now. I feel my help coming now. Yeah. Down at Mount Zion, it doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what you've done. I feel my help coming out here. All that matters is huh, where your soul is going. <laughs> you hear me, bro? Wow. As the Bible says, <laughs> on that day of judgment, there's only one or two places you can go. This ain't no multiple choice question now. It's either yes or no. <laughs> bro, what are the one or two places? I'm talking about heaven, and I'm talking about hello, operator. I'm dialing 911. <laughs> Receiving the Lord as my savior is something I should have done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saying there's only one. There's only one. There's only one. One or two places that you can go. Yeah. Woo! One or two places. Girl. One or two places, girl. Well, I yeah. don't know about you, Robin, but where I'm going, I plan on wearing white all year long, even after Labor Day. <laughs> yes, <laughs> man, bro. You know, that makes me feel so good. Mm, knowing that when I lay down and die, when my ships come in, when my name is called on the road, uh, like Dick and Willie say, when my bed become my, my cooling bowl and, and my room become a burying ground. I can sleep peacefully knowing that you'll be up there saving a place for me. Mm, mm, mm. Saving a place for you? Yeah, bro, yeah. What makes you think you won't be saving a place for me? Just because I may be a little older than you doesn't mean that the Lord's going to call me home before he does you. That's true. That's true. All right. That's true. My fire might be burning a little low, but trust me when I tell you that I'm still red hot. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, man, Mother Pearl. <laughs> You're so crazy. Oh, I have a seat. Oh, Pearl. Oh, 
it is so good to know that even in the midst of everything that's happening with you and your husband passing and everything, you're still able to find humor and joy and laughter in life. So you know, Reverend, life is too short not to watch the sun rise or stop and smell the roses. Now that's very true, Pearl, which is why in addition to coming by and extending a personal invitation for you to be a part of the church family again, we also wanted to extend our condolences to you and your family. Now, you have such a beautiful spirit, Pearl. But even the strongest of us have, you know, we just need that comfort and shelter from those around us. Well, here's to hoping that my family can provide me with that comfort. Mm -hmm. They've already provided their shelter. Well, the, the invitation is extended to them as well, Pearl. You know what they say, Pearl? You know, it's at times like this when grief can take its toll on the entire family. <laughs> Why does my family need an invitation to the church they already belong to? Well, Pearl, it seems that, you know, you coming back, you know, since they haven't been to church in a while, that, you know, with you coming back and everything, I feel like that would be an excellent opportunity for everybody to come to church as one family, one unit. You know what they say, Pearl? A family united is much stronger than one person of the family standing alone. Have you seen my family since you heard of my husband's passing? Not that I recall. My husband passed about 11 months ago. Are you saying that my family hasn't been to church since then? Actually, Pearl, I think it's been about three years. Yeah, about three years. And honestly, Pearl, if it hadn't been for them, fo them folks at church talking, now you know how they can talk. I don't know if I would have heard about it. So honestly, now that I think about it, I can't really remember when the last time I seen your family. I didn't mean to cause no trouble now. Did you call me? I did. What are you screaming like that for? Because I'm your mama, and I can scream your name if I want to. Well, you forget. I work at a hospital, and when I hear screaming, to me that says emergency. Oh, this is an emergency, a spiritual one. Do you recognize this man? Reverend Davis, it's been a while. I should say the same for you, too. I mean, it's been a while since we've seen you down at the church. We miss you the past few Sundays. 144 Sundays, to be correct. <laughs> Three years worth of Sundays. 144. Yes. There are four Sundays in a month, 12 months in a year. That's 48 Sundays a year times three years is 144 Sundays. Do you need me to do the math again? Has it been that long? <laughs> and here I thought I would spend all eternity with my family in heaven. Looks like I'm going to be the only one wearing white around here. <laughs> Reverend Davis. I guess I should apologize on the behalf of myself and my husband for letting our attendance go for so long. But with me working six days a week and Walter with his accounting firm keeping him swamped, Sundays are the only days that we have to just catch up with things around the house and catch up with mm. each other. Mm -hmm. The Lord took time to make you, so you should take time to thank him. Look, Renee, I just stopped by just to welcome your mother back to the community. And to also let her know that the doors of the church are always going to be open to her. Now, just because y'all been gone for a while doesn't mean it's too late to come back, all right? If you know what I know, <laughs> you better be in, house, in church this Sunday. You better get your house in order with God before it's too late. Look, it's never too late. Renee, I didn't come here to judge y'all, okay? I just came to welcome your mother back. So if y'all decide to come to church on Sunday, doors will be open. All right? Thank you, Reverend. You're welcome. Ma, we'll talk later. I had no idea. No one of this house is in such disorder. They hadn't been going to the Lord's house. Pearl, don't judge them so harshly now. Now, you know your daughter and your son-in-law are not the first couple to ever fall by the wayside. I mean, with so many young women and men just trying to be so career-oriented and living that fast-paced lifestyle, I mean, church has just become less and less of a priority nowadays. I know, Reverend, but it's hard to believe that my family is one of them, especially since Renee was raised in the church. Mm -hmm. Well, Pearl, I tell you what. You got to start remembering how you raised Renee. Now, you know if you push and pull on her too much, you're going to end up pushing her further away. So just give her some time to realize its importance again. All right? In the meantime, you be the shepherd. Do your example. All right? Come on, I got a story to tell you. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's gonna be
be all right now. Service. Sounds nice. That choir can sing. Made me want to get up there and join them. Hmm. Why didn't you? I ain't want to show anybody out. <laughs> asking me to sing with them would be like asking Patty LaBelle to sing with a school choir. <laughs> Jesus, he walks with me. Jesus. Ma, please. Do you mind? You were ready to catch the spirit, weren't you? I'm trying to catch up on these Ooh. bills before they become overdue. How mean, that Reverend Davis can preach. Mm -hmm. Kind of remind me of that Reverend Michael Armstrong back at home. Now that's the man who can deliver a sinner. And Lord knows I done my shit. You don't say. But I like Reverend Davis. His sermon is short and to the point. Start at 12, finish by 12.15. <laughs> Sounds like you had a good time. Are you listening to a word I'm saying? Every word. What did I just say? Start at 12, finish by 12.15, and home in enough time to tell us about it. What is that supposed to mean? You know exactly what that means. You heard we haven't been going to church, so now you're trying to bring church home to us. I was just saying how much I enjoyed myself. I know exactly what you're doing. You're doing everything you can to make us feel guilty about going. Renee, you were raised in the church, and so were your children until now. I don't know what happened that you stopped going, but you need to make time to go back. Mom, I work six days a week. Walter works almost every day of the week. Now, I know we haven't done right by not making church a priority, but that doesn't make us heathens either. No, but what it means is without church in your lives, you can be led by heathens. 
Now, I'm not saying that I'm perfect, because Lord knows I done did my share of dirt. But I rest assured knowing that when my day of judgment comes, I will be forgiven for all the bad I've done. And the good I've done will outweigh the bad. Are you concerned that our souls won't be right with God? Only you know the answer to that. But when it's time for you to walk up on them pearly gates and your name ain't up on the VIP list, don't come looking for me. Because I be chilling in the upper room with St. Peter. The upper room? You know. The upper room. Hey, Ma. How was church? Uh, spiritually uplifting. I'm glad you enjoyed yourself. What are you two talking about? Oh, nothing. Just the VIP party I'm going to later. Sounds exclusive. Oh, it is. Now, how did you get an invitation? Oh, I know the guy who's hosting the party. <laughs> Let me find out my mother-in-law is connected to some high-profile individual. Hey, listen. If he needs an accountant to take care of his finances, <laughs> give him my car. Seems to me you had plenty of opportunities to give him your car long ago. Uh, who are you talking to? God, that's who. God? Renee, what is she talking about? Reverend Davis came by the other day to invite Ma to church, and he also mentioned that we hadn't been to church ourselves in over three years. <laughs> 144 Sundays. <laughs> Wow, okay, 144? That's a lot of Sundays. Okay, okay. So we haven't been to church in a while. I mean, but just because we don't go to church on a regular basis really doesn't mean that we're, the, we're not Christians, Mom. I mean, come on. I know people that go to church on Sunday and they sin Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday all over again. What does that have to do with your family? Nothing but... I mean, come on. We have so much that we're doing and we're so involved in our, in our careers. I mean, when do we have time to go to church? Well, you need to let God deal with those people. And you need to make sure that your family is strong and protected. Look, we got all the insurance money can buy. We're well protected. <laughs> but it's your spirit. It's our spirit. Listen. Just because you go to church doesn't make you a Christian. I mean, hey, I know people that go to church on a regular basis, and they still sin. I mean, come on, we're not so bad. Again, what does those people have to do with your family? <sighs> Nothing, Ma. Not a thing. But hey, look at the house that we're living in. Look at the food that we're eating. We're not doing too bad. Listen, all of those things are important for life here on earth, but what I'm talking about is way beyond physical possessions. I'm talking about the strength of your family, the spiritual strength. The one thing that keeps a family connected is its spiritual strength. A family that takes the time to share in the same thoughts, share in the same hopes, Prayers, sharing the same feelings is a family that can stand against anything because they're sharing in the same spirit. Hmm. Ricardo, Regina, where have you two been? Don't hang with my partners, why? Regina, out with a friend. Hang with partners, out with a friend. All on a Sunday? They have time for this, but they don't have 90 minutes for church. Church. Your grandmother's concerned because we haven't been to church in a while. And I'm going to make it my business to see that this family starts going back. <laughs> nah, dog, yo, I can't be seen in church, yo. That ain't gangsta. Besides, it's going to cause a lot of questions. My partner's in. I ain't having it. Yeah, no offense, Grandma, but I can't see fit in church into my schedule. Since the weekends are the only days of the week I have time to spend with my friends. Since when do children tell their parents what they will and will not do? Look, Ma, since Renee and I are so busy with our careers, we've been trusting Ricardo and Regina to make some decisions on their own. I mean, you know, they, 
They, they do okay. They're not, they not doing too bad. I wish this family would have went to church with me today. Today's sermon was about serving two masters. No man can serve two masters. Either they will love one and hate the other, or they will despise one and hold to the other. This family have gotten so involved with their careers and their social lives that you all have let that become priority and put everything else that's important about family behind. Mom, I don't mean any disrespect, but I can't get these bills paid unless I concentrate on these checks I'm writing. Yeah, and I got some stuff to take care of. I guess I have a phone call to make. Look, Mom, it's not that you're not right, but I mean, times have changed. I mean, we got to take advantage of what little bit of time that we have together. to make this house into your own. Mm -hmm. You even started cooking your signature dishes. Well, I did teach you a few of my recipes before you and Walter got married. But I guess you don't have time for cooking family meals either. Huh? Right again. We do a lot of heat and eat around here. <laughs> so I guess my recipes are going to die with me, huh? You're not even going to teach Regina. Regina? That girl is not a cook. Regina can burn cereal. Well, maybe if you taught her a few dishes, one or two, that'll get her started. No time. Besides, with you here now, and you could teach her a, sh a thing or two, and with the two of you in the kitchen, I won't ever have to cook again. <laughs> teach them to cook. Teach them to pray. I have to teach this family how to do everything. Ma, don't start that again. <laughs> I didn't say a word. Oh, Ma, don't worry about making a place for Walter. He usually eats dinner in his office. Why is he doing that? Because Walter's usually on call at this time. He eats dinner in his office because when his clients call, he wants to quickly pull up their files. Well, I hope this is the first, the last, and only time he'll be eating dinner this way. Actually, Walter always eats dinner in his office. I can't remember the last time he's eaten dinner with us. Well, all that's about to change. He's going to start eating dinner with his family. Walter? Walter? I need, I need to talk to you about dinner, Ma. Uh, thanks, but no thanks, Ma. I won't be eating in my office. Oh, I know, because you'll be eating dinner with your family at the table. No, I won't be eating in my office because I have to go see a client. But I'll pick up something on the way. At 7 o'clock at night? If you ever hear a wealthy person talk, you know what they'll say? Money never sleeps. Okay? Listen. Well, I am proud that my daughter married such an ambitious and industrial man. But outside of being a businessman with your own business and everything, you're a father. Mom. And as a father, you need to spend quality time with your family. And dinner is one of those times. Look, Mom. No, I you look. Dinner is not just about eating. It's about giving thanks and sharing in each other's blessings. You do want to give thanks, don't you? Listen, Mom. I don't mean no harm, but remember the career that we talked about? You know, the one that pays for the car note, that pays for the electric bill, that pays for this house. This is it. Now, if it was not for these clients and the amount of money that I make from them, none of this would be possible. Now, I have to go. Don't make me go upside your head with this drumstick. Get over to that table and sit down and have dinner with your family. Kids, come on and eat. Dinner's ready. Dad, what are you doing at the table? <laughs> He's having dinner with his family. I thought you usually eat dinner in your office. Well, he wants to spend time with his family now. Doesn't he look nice? He's even dressed appropriate. <laughs> Jacket and tie. Doesn't that look better than baggy jeans and a t-shirt? Whatever, that's gross. <laughs> Not before you say grace. 
Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord, to thank you for... Hello. No, no, I'm not going to be able to come. Yeah, I'll call you back later. Precious Lord, we thank you for your blessings, Lord. We come before you, Lord, just humbling ourselves, Lord, because we know without you, none of this would be possible, Lord. Hello? No. Call me back later. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, we thank you, Lord, for your blessings. We thank you for this food, Lord. We ask that you bless the... Oh, this is not... yeah, I, I could... Now listen here. I don't know who the hell this is, but anyone with any amount of decency knows not to call someone's house between the hours of 6 and 8 p.m. because those are dinner hours. If you call here one more time, during dinner hours, I will find out who you are, where you are, and serve you for our dinner tomorrow. <laughs> Not bad for a Christian, huh? Yeah, what's up? Where you going? We can talk for a second. Oh, yeah, I'm about to go roll with my partner, so I, I just got a minute. Okay. Well, you know, since your mom's been working all the time, I decided to help her out around here with the cooking and the cleaning. Yeah, and uh, sure mom appreciates that, but uh, can I go now? No. Well, when I was cleaning your room yesterday, I found this. And this. And this. What's that? <laughs> well, it doesn't smell like oregano. Uh, don't worry about it. You can keep it. Oh, I planned on keeping the cash. Because <laughs> it's time for Grandma to get some new shoes. But um, unless you're going blind or something, you need to explain to me what you're doing with this. Look, don't even worry about it. It doesn't even belong to me. Who does it belong to? Yo, what's good? Sims. <laughs> is that who it belongs to? Yeah, yo, you need to give it back for real. You're going to get me in deep of all sense stuff in here. I knew there was something different about you. You think because your parents are working all the time that your behaviors and your actions have gone unnoticed. But I'm telling you this, there's a new sheriff in town. And if you ever disrespect me like that again, I'm going to find me a good piece of hickory and beat you till you can't grow. Get the door. Man, you better be lucky that I don't hit ancestors. You better be lucky that I don't hit illiterate children who read on the second grade level. Go tell your ancestors to chill. Cause she don't know me like that. Oh, I know you. You the dummy leading this dummy around. <laughs> Two fools. One can't read and one can't spell. I let you decide who's who. Your name is Sin, you heard? <laughs> That's right, a sin since the moment of birth. It's short for sincere. <laughs> Which means that I'm sincere about mine. See, I had the mission boys there, and we don't play all that there. <laughs> well, look, my grandson will not be running with you and the mistake boys any longer. And if you give him anything else illegal to hold, somebody's going to be holding you behind prison bars, calling you their girlfriend. You think you all that because your name is sincere? But I'm going to tell you this, you ain't welcome around here. If you come around again with your money and your drugs, I'm going to introduce you to a grandma thug. What? <laughs> Goodbye, senseless. Not <laughs> it's 
okay, baby. It's all right. So making the right decision is always the hardest thing to do. Man, you happy. Uh, are you okay? Yo, look, don't touch me. I'm taking you to the hospital. I'm going to call your mother right now and tell her to meet us at the emergency Nah, you ain't calling and telling her nothing. Senseless in them game of boys did this to you, didn't they? Nah, you did this. How am I the one who's guilty of beating you within an inch of your life? Because I told you what would happen for touching sense stuff. Not only did you touch something that didn't belong to me or you, but then you disrespect him like that. That young man needs his behind beat. Well, he beat mine instead. If someone's gonna beat you for something that someone else said or did, then you need to leave their company. Man, I tried to do that. Listening to you, I thought getting out was the right thing to do. Well, I open my mouth and tell him that I quit, and then I get punched in it. Thanks a lot, Grandma. Honey, you did the right thing by telling them you quit. People who carry themselves that way only end up in one or two places. In jail or dead? Look, you just don't get it, do you? A group like the Mission Boys is like a mob. They're in the drugs, arm robbers, contract killers. That's why they call themselves the Mission Boys. That's actually their mission statement. Can't believe my only grandson is mixed up in a group like this. Well, your only grandson is going to be your dead grandson in a minute. A group like the Mission Boys just don't let you walk away. If you saw as much as I saw, they're going to do whatever they can to make sure that I don't snitch on them. We can call the police. Call the police and tell them what? I sold drugs, I robbed people, but now I know better? I'm in accomplice with everything that they did. We can pray. We can give it to God. Let God take care hey, of yo, us. Get, yo, get out of my face with that boy, for real. I don't want to hear nothing else you got to say. Because of you, you always got to stick your holy nose in my business, and now my nose is probably broken. But I want to help you. I can help you get through this. Look, do you really want to help me? Yes, I want to help you. Take your ass back to the country. That's what you can do. I remember, I remember when you were first born. Your father was so proud. He had a son. I can still remember like it was yesterday. He was saying, this is going to be my little man. But as a child, you did everything. I mean, you did everything. You were so advanced. At four, you read so well, you were reading your own bedtime stories. And when you turned five, you were assembling your own toys. You even made your own toy chest using some of your dad's tools and some wood. When you turned six, you learned how to ride a bike all by yourself without training wheels. I guess as you got older, you know, your father relied on your self-reliance to help you become a man. You was doing everything else on your own. But what he didn't realize that by allowing you to grow on your own, you were missing out on the most important thing about having a father. And what's that? Having someone to look up to. When I came here, I knew there was something different about you, but I couldn't put my hand on it. Then when that young man came over here yesterday, oh, I knew there was something going on inside of you. And today, to hear you talk to me that way, your own grandmother, something's going on in there. It's a void, a void. But that void can't be filled by some doctor or preacher or some thug on the street who promises he gonna make you one of his soldiers. That void can only be filled by two people. That's your father and your heavenly father.
that's a crazy thing you see everybody's trying to get a piece of me my friends became my family the streets they keep on calling me next stop's the penitentiary so who do i run to when there's no one at home and who can i talk to i feel so alone so i gotta Letting go of my lifestyle, turning my life around. Don't wanna be free, won't be no tragedy. You can hold me. Letting go of my lifestyle, turning my life around. Don't wanna be free, won't be no tragedy. I'm tired of playing. Games. I don't want to be ashamed of the way I live my life And when you look at me, oh, you just wait and see You're gonna be so proud of me So who do I run to when there's no one at home? Who can I talk to? I feel so alone So I got to let it go back on track I'm walking away and never looking back out with the old and then with the new let me go let me be I'm walking away with my dignity I'm walking know about that stuff? Mm-hmm. Anyone from the country does. Well, I'm about to go lay down around my uh, I'm feeling kind of hurt. Uh, not, not so fast. Hold up. It is a matter of um, the statement you made to me a few minutes ago. You know, about going back to the country. Oh, I told you, Grandma. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm sorry. Oh, you couldn't have been thinking. <laughs> because if you were, you would have remembered what I said to you yesterday about disrespecting me. Do you remember? Um, you said that if I ever disrespected you again, then you would beat me until I couldn't grow anymore? Mm-hmm. That's right. And as you know, I am a woman of my word. <laughs> hmm. a shame that parents today have forgotten the value of a good piece of hickory. Yo, look, Grandma. I can't take another one of those beatdowns. <laughs> I know, baby, but this is going to hurt you more than it hurts me. I'm getting ready to go to work. Now, if you go to the store today, Save yourself some time and money. 
by the meat and the vegetables that are already packaged in, in bulk and that are already frozen. That way you can freeze the food and it lasts longer. The food lasts longer because of all that unhealthy stuff that's in it. So no wonder this family isn't sicker than what it already is. Back home, I bought fresh and cooked fresh. That's the way mama did it, that's the way I do it, and if you know what's best for you and your family, that's the way you do it too. Well, you know what, Ma? It doesn't make sense to go to the store every day. <laughs> well, it doesn't make sense that you're spending all this money on stuff that's pre-mixed and pre-cooked. With a little more time and a lot less money, you can prepare those same dishes yourself. And they'll taste better. Ma, this is what I have to do to be able to maintain my career and cook for my family. <laughs> well, all oh, that's about to change. From now on, this family is going to eat the way God intended us to eat. From the earth and not from the fat. You'll feel better, you'll live longer, and you'll look better. Look at me. I'm 32 years older than you, and I look better than you. Hmm. Hmm. What's wrong with you? I feel hmm. sick. It must have been something I ate. Is it your stomach that's bothering you? My stomach hmm. hurts, my head hurts, and my legs hurt when I walk. May cause stomach pains, headaches, and cramping of the legs. Did you feel this way when you woke up this morning? It woke me up. Well, look, I'm no doctor, but it doesn't look like anything serious. Why don't you go to school, get some breakfast from the cafeteria, and if you still don't feel better, go see the school nurse. I've got to go to school? You can't stay home. Why not? Grandma's here. Your grandmother is not a babysitter. And I'm not a baby. Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. You both are right. You're right. You are not a baby. And I definitely ain't no babysitter. Shoot, I wouldn't change my own diaper. But it seems to me, Renee, that instead of sending her off to school just so the nurse can turn around and send her back home, why don't you take her to the hospital with you so one of the doctors there could take a look at her? The doctors at the hospital don't have time to diagnose some little girl's stomach pains and headaches, which can probably be cured with some aspirin and some ginger ale. Little girl? Not even their own supervisor's daughter? No, and besides, I have two meetings and an insurance audit compliance. I don't have the time either. You're a trip. Here I am, sick as a dog, and you're gonna send me off to school. You see sick people every day, but when your own daughter gets sick, you could care less. Hey, if you don't love me, you should just say so, because I can always get my love from someone else. Well, that settles that. Renee, sit down. We Ma, need to talk. I'm late for work. I said sit! Ma, I am late for work. Why don't you go in the backyard and plant a garden or something? <laughs> it's funny you should mention the backyard. Well, I was packing my things before I moved up here. <laughs> I decided to go out back to pay a visit to the old hickory tree. For sentimental reasons, you understand. You do remember the hickory tree? I remember when you were a little girl. You were the clumsiest little girl in the county. You were the only child I know who would go outside and three seconds later you'd be back in the house crying. How you got hit by a parked car, I will <laughs> never know. But as you got older, you grew out of that clumsy stage. It started to work for your calling. Instead of being clumsy, you became more careful detail-oriented, meticulous even. That's probably what makes you so career-driven and such a good administrator. What's your point, Ma? My point is, being clumsy as a child didn't make you a different child, a better child, even less of a child. It just made you a child. And early on, children figure out ways to get noticed, find ways to stay under their parents' watchful eye, to get their attention. Because to a child, attention is love. To a child, knowing that your parents are always there is love. You knew that if anything happened to you, if you got hurt, felt any type of pain or discomfort, you knew you can come to us and we'd be there. We'd be right there, waiting and watching. So you're saying that 
Regina's performance about being sick, was it put on for my attention? Nah, that child really is sick. And don't be surprised if she comes home and intentionally tries to give you what she has. What I'm saying is, Renee, you need to remember that you are a mother first. And you need to treat them children with the same care as you do that job. When your child is, is reaching out to you, just trying to make sure you're watching, trying to get a little attention, be as careful with that child as you are your career. You're not going out tonight? Oh, no, I decided to stay home tonight. You, your friends don't have anything else to do either? No, nah, they're doing something, but um, I decided to stay home because uh, Grandma says I have a good voice. Well, you know the music market is doing pretty well right now. I got a couple connections at some top labels. <laughs> All I have to do is make a few phone calls. You and your group can get together and form a bigger group. Sorry, Dad, but um, I think I'll be better off being a solo artist. What about your friends? I'm sure they'll be off doing something on them. No, no, they probably have no problem getting a contract, and I'm sure whatever they come out with, it's gonna be a hit. <laughs> well, look at Miss Sunshine. I feel so much better. 
I guess I had one of those 24 hour bugs. Must have been. I feel better, Ma. That's nice, dear. Well, I'm going out. Okay, baby, be safe. What? Well, hold up. Even though your parents aren't concerned with where you're going and who you're going with, I am. So where you going? Out. Out? Out where? Just out. Just out. Is that the name of a new movie playing or restaurant or something? Just out, you know, like hanging out. Oh, so who are you hanging out with? A friend. A friend. Does this friend have a name? He wouldn't know me if I, to if I told you his name, sir. So this friend is a he. Is this friend a boyfriend? Maybe. Well, if it's a boyfriend, then it's important enough that we know what his name is. Yeah, and I think I would like to know the name of this dude that's, uh, you know, taking on my little sister. You don't know him either. Uh, Walter, do you know that there's a young man coming to take your daughter out and no one seems to know what his name is? Do you know him? Uh, have I met him? No. Has your mother? No. Well, when are we going to meet him? I don't know, one of these days. <laughs> seems to me like one of these days needs to be the day. You can't, because I'm supposed to be meeting him outside. Outside? You folks don't know nothing about dating. When a young man comes to take a young woman out, he has to come to the door and ask for her. He has to introduce himself to the entire family and tell the parents where they're going and what time they'll be back. Now, where I come from, we call that court. I don't know what this, what y'all call this foolishness y'all got going on here. Now, as a young lady, you ought to wait for him to come and ask for you. He probably won't. Oh, well, so long, Sam. <laughs> I get it. Oh, no, no, I'll get it. Excuse me. Yo, is Gina here? Oh. <laughs> Who are you? I'm T. T? Yeah, it's short for Terrence. under the jail for dating my daughter? Shoot, nah, Dad. Bump Dad, we gonna have him killed. <laughs> Go to your room. Why, don't act like you all care now. Girl, you better take your butt to your room right now for you not have a room to go to. Don't make me sick. What? And as for you, I suggest you turn around and leave my house and don't you ever come back in here again. Oh, yes? And what if I do? What? If you do, instead of your nickname being T, it'll be missing T. Talk That's it? That, that. Instead of your name being T, they now gonna be calling you Little T. Oh. <laughs> Get out of here! <laughs> the mission boys got any openings? Sure do. Let's get them. <laughs> about to sit at my dinner table looking like the hair brush and the comb ain't been invented. What's the difference? I have no reason to eat. You have got to be kidding me. A relationship was ended with a man old enough to be your uncle without bloodshed and you're upset over it? I can't help feeling this way. When you care about someone, their age shouldn't make a difference. <laughs> Regina, we're not talking about two kids who exchange Christmas cards or birthday presents. We're talking about a grown man taking advantage of a young girl. He didn't take advantage of me. We wanted to go out with each other. I'm sure he wanted to go out with you, but not for the reasons you think. Making us like a dirty old man. That's what he is. <laughs> I know it's tight. Been dumped by every woman his own age, so he goes after young girls. But he didn't see me as a girl. He saw me as a young woman. Baby, we need to talk. Do I have to? Yes. Well, I'm feeling sick again. 
oh, you're not sick this time, but those feelings are coming from a place inside you. What are you talking about? What feelings? What you felt for Tony wasn't love, Terrence. Who cares? Tony, Terrence, they're going to be calling them Lil T now. <laughs> it wasn't love. It wasn't friendship, infatuation, nothing. It was the protective comfort that comes with knowing that someone is watching over you. But why would I need someone like that when I've got my parents? Are you sure that you feel that your parents are always there for you? I know they're supposed to be. But even when they're not, he is. God is always watching over you.
yourself at home. Oh, well, thank you, Pearl. Thank you for inviting me over. You know, it's been a minute since we had a chance to talk. I mean, since you've been back, really haven't had that chance. Well, really outside of church at all, you know? I know, I know. Still a coffee drinker, right? Well, I've been known to enjoy a fresh brew cup of coffee every now and then. But decaf if you have it. And my doctor's been on me about this blood pressure. <laughs> it ain't your pressure. It's that powerful preaching you doing. <laughs> you know, you might be right. It's just when I get going now. You still finish by 12.15. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Hey, man. Mm, get into this word. Let me get to this word. Mm. Get to this word. Reverend Davis, I didn't know you were here. I guess you can say I'm always here. Well, at least the man I represent is always here. Well, Your mother invited me over for coffee. It's good seeing you again. Good seeing you, too. How you been? Oh, everything's fine. You know, going here, going there, going everywhere. It's just never enough time in the day. Not even enough time for church? I didn't say that. You didn't have to. Look, Reverend, I'm a little uncomfortable talking about this right now. Why? It's just, I'm extremely busy, and you're hearing a social call, not to talk shop. Well, I understand what you're saying, Renee. And a lot like you, I have problems leaving my work at the office. Oh, Renee? I didn't know you were here. But you didn't go, get up to go to church this morning. I thought maybe you had to go to the hospital or hire another one of them cardiologists or something. Reverend, you remember my daughter, don't you? She's grown a bit since you last seen her, huh? Take it easy on your daughter, Pro. It hasn't been that long. <laughs> long enough. Is this decaf? Oh, it won't kill you. Uh, you know, Renee, Although you work in a job that's very highly demanding and sometimes overwhelming, I admire your commitment to health care. You know, the lack of proper medical treatment is a growing problem nowadays, as you well know. And finding good and cost-effective health care is even a problem for me. Now, I was just telling your mother how I have to stop by the doctor's office at least once a month just to get my exams and my blood pressure checkups. Why don't you go to the hospital with Renee? Renee? You wouldn't mind taking a friend of the family or maybe a family member to the hospital with you, would you? Reverend Davis, mm -hmm. I have to go. I'm extremely busy. Don't, don't be rude. You have a visitor in your house. Sit. Visit for a while. I apologize, Reverend Davis, but I have to be going. It was good seeing you again. Okay. Well, we all have our cross to bear, but Renee, before you go, do you mind if I talk to you just for one second? Perhaps alone? <laughs> well, excuse me. I guess I'll just go to time out or something. Have a seat, Renee. What do you want to talk about, Reverend? You know, Renee, I remember like it was yesterday when Little Ricardo and Regina came to the church. You and Walter brought them to be, to be baptized. I remember as parents, that was a very special moment for y'all. I remember that too. <laughs> That's when I first met your mother. I could tell that as the matriarch of the family, it was a very proud moment for her as well. I mean, but because of your mother, that turned out to be the longest baptism ever in the history of Mount Zion. You remember how we were over at the pool, we had all the kids together, and she was over by the window taking over 100 pictures, all with that Polaroid camera. I remember that. She stood there after every picture, shaking it, waiting for the picture to develop. Mm, mm, mm. Your mother's a trip. She's a very, 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 very precious person. Very loving person. I mean, your mother's a leader. And honestly, believe it or not, she's just trying to lead your family back down the right path. No. That's my mother, Reverend. Don't you think I know that already? Well, yeah. Here's some things you may not know. Now, you and your family invited your mother to come live with y'all, right? What you may not realize is that it was God's plan all along for her to come stay with y'all. Renee, God is always working, and whether or not we know it, he's, he stays moving. He's, he's, he's just doing things that we may not even realize. Look, he knows we're imperfect. He knows this world we live in is imperfect. But yet he gives us his grace and his mercy and his Holy Spirit to help us deal with the imperfections of this life. Now, God has had his hand on his family since day one, and he knew 
the day would come he would use your mother to help guide this family back, to bring this family back and give it the strength and guidance that it needed. So you're saying that my mother coming to live with us was God's doing? That's exactly what I'm saying. Like I said, he's always moving, Renee. He's always doing things. And luckily for us, God knows us better than we know ourselves. You know, Reverend, I see why you and my mother get along so well. You both have a way of getting your point across. <laughs> Bless you. I just use the words that God gives me. Which is why you became a spiritual leader? Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, you could say that. I mean, before I was saved, I mean, I, I was out there doing my thing now. Yeah, I mean, you know, I did a lot of things, some good, some bad. But, you know, I always knew deep down in my heart that being a spiritual leader was my calling. And honestly, Renee, I'm calling on you, okay? Take everything that we've talked about everything that I've given you and help lead your family too. Can you do that? I know you can. No, 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 please don't hang up. No, I can fix this. I, I can fix. Oh. Hey, I didn't expect to find you home already. I thought you had a meeting with Don Ashford this evening. Not anymore. Where's your mother? I don't know. I just got here a few seconds ago, remember? Where has she gone today? Probably to the store. Now, she has this obsession about going to the store every day. I tell you what. If she's not back in 10 minutes, I'm going to hunt her down, and I'm going to give her both ends of the barrel. What's wrong? I lost my account with Don Ashford. Don Ashford? He's managed his account for over 12 years. Not anymore. Because of the way she was rude to him and hung up on him during dinner, he took his money, and he went to another account. Can he do that? Can he do that? It's his money. He can do whatever he wants with it. Okay. <sighs> Just calm down. I'm sure you can fix this. Fix it? It's nothing to fix. He's taking his money, and he's gone. Man, what's going on in here? Yeah, what's all this screaming about? Your grandmother. She's costing me money and my career. That's what. Listen, now I know you're upset, but threatening my mother is not going to solve anything. No, look, not to mention it won't work. Look, Grandma would take you down. Didn't you see how she beat up Regina's ex-boyfriend? <laughs> now, when my mother gets home, I will have a talk with her. I'm sure we can get her to apologize. And what if she doesn't? May the best man win. Well, isn't this a Kodak moment? <laughs> Do you realize that since I've been here, this is the first time the entire family has been in the same place at the same time? Well, take the picture, because it's the last time you're going to see it. Excuse me? You heard what I said. No, no, actually, I didn't. Come over here and say it. Yo, yo, look, Dad, just... Just chill, man. I, I've seen what she can do. Mom, we need to talk. About what? Walter lost one of his clients because of you. My biggest client. He's taking his money all because of the way you spoke to him rudely on the phone, and he's gone. You mean Mr. Millionaire who calls at dinner time? Let me tell He's you. the rude and disrespectful no, 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 one. No, no, no. Let me tell you, as much money as I've made off that man, he can call me anytime he wants. Then he's not the one with the problem. You are. I'm the one with the problem? Yes. Yes. You put your business in front of your home. Your clients come before your family. In my book, that's a huge problem. Before you got here, this family didn't have any problem. Well, you know there's a saying that goes, just because a man has sight doesn't necessarily mean he can see. So what is that supposed to mean? It means that this family was too blind to see that it had far too many problems before I got here. I think what it means is you saw what you wanted to see. No, I saw what there was to see. I saw a son who was so used to doing things without a father, he forgot he needed someone to look up to and went and found it in the streets. I saw a daughter who was so desperate for her parents' attention that she went and found it in a man old enough to be a parent himself. I saw a mother and a wife who was so busy in her career 
career that she forgot to be a mother and a wife. And I saw a father and a husband who was so busy bringing his clients to financial prosperity that he forgot to bring his family to eternal prosperity. Look, this family ain't perfect, but it ain't all that bad either. And we may not spend quality time that the other families spend together, but we love each other, and we love you. Look, I know y'all love each other, and I know y'all love me. But right now, y'all are just loving me to death. So what are you saying? I'm saying it's killing me to see a family that I had a hand in creating become a family that I wish I was no longer a part of. Now, Ma, that is a hurtful thing to say. You don't think you've said hurtful things to me? After having my doubts about moving up here in the first place, then I figured I was being selfish. And then maybe this would be a good thing for both me and the family. But now I see I was wrong. So what are you saying? I'm saying I'm glad I didn't sell my house. Over the next few days, just pretend like I'm not here. I'll call the airline tomorrow to book me a flight back to North Carolina. Why? Because next Sunday, instead of going to church, I'll be going back home. No, nah, Grandma, don't leave. Stay. No, don't go, Grandma. No. This is your home. No. Because I'd rather live alone in the home that your grandfather and I raised our children in than to spend another day being killed in this house.
What are you doing? Packing my things. I told you a few days ago that I would be leaving today. No need to take me to the airport. I already called a cab. That's fine. We hadn't planned on going to the airport this morning. Oh, right. Sunday's a day off, right? No. Today is going to be a little different. What's going to be different about it? Instead of working the entire Sunday, you're only going to work half of it? No. Nah. No, today is going to be family day. <laughs> oh. W what, are you going to teach your children how to accept defeat if your business loses money? Or maybe 101 things to do if you're a patient confined in a hospital bed? Well, you're certainly dressed for it. Nah. No, today is the Lord's day. <laughs> well, I hate to tell you this, but... Watching Creflo Dollar and Billy Graham in your pajamas doesn't necessarily count as going to church. We hadn't planned on being in the house today. <laughs> Neither did I. And look, I hate long goodbyes, so if it's all the same to you, I wait for my cab outside. Well, wait. Before you go, we have something to show you. What are you showing me? That you already dressed for work for Monday? No, we're dressed for church today. And we want you to go with us. Listen, if you're really going to church, God bless you. But go because you want to get things right with God, not because you want to get them right with me. We're going to get things right with God, but more importantly, we're going because we need to get our family together. And that includes you, Ma. Well, I'm sorry. I have to go. I bought a Super Saver ticket, and it's non-refundable. <laughs> so. You know what? It's not too late. Isn't that what you and Reverend Davis have been saying to me all along? Look, I can't remember what I said. I drink Heineken, remember? <laughs> well, if that's the case, then you really do need to be going to church with us today. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry. I can't. I have to go. Tell the kids I said goodbye, and I'll call you when I get home. Wait. Tell them yourself. Kids! Oh. Are these the children you remember watching grow up? Why are you crying, Grandma? Two reasons.
Change is coming in the role of sincere Mr. Derek Canty, in the role of Terrence Mr. Delmar Parks, in the role of Regina Miss Tara Yates Reeves, in the role of Reverend Davis Mr. Mike Fields. In the role of Ricardo, Mr. Marcus Canty. In the role of Walter, Mr. L.B. Williams. In the role of Renee, Ms. Charmaine Flanagan. In the role of Mother Pearl, Ms. Cecily Cross. Understatement. 
Uh, I can't describe how elated and emotional I feel right now at this moment. Out of everything I've ever written, everything I've ever done, this is probably my most proudest moment. Oh, um, because it's about these guys here on stage. I couldn't ask for a better cast, crew, directors, people to work with than these folks right here. Speaking of people I've worked with, this gentleman right here is actually somebody I've known since we were in elementary school yeah. together. Thank you, thank you. Between me writing the play and him writing the phenomenal music for this production, yeah. would you agree it was a great production? Yeah. Definitely thank you guys for making this a successful weekend. Um, we weren't sure what our attendance was going to be, we weren't sure what our ticket sales were going to do. We just left it in God's hands and look what God has blessed us. secret what God can do.
Sometimes we turn away the people that need us. We often turn our hearts.